I don't know why it took me forever to find the recording button, huh? All right, so I'm going to turn you guys over to Miss Janie right now. Um, you do have Chapter 8 Smart Notes packet. The reason why we're going over Chapter 7 still is because it wasn't finished. Chapter 8 was the chapter that was given to you for this week, but um, Miss Janie didn't get through it fast enough. So that's why I just kidding, that she was going to hit me. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, she was a little slow on it. <laughs> and that never happens, huh? I'm faster than Miss Connie. <laughs> She's like, you're going too fast. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. So the, the rule goes, okay, if the slides, stuck, you're going to have to tell me, okay? Okay, are you guys still there? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, we're all here. All right, so I'm going to put up the slides, all right? Hey, Miss Jamie, my phone's gonna die though. Just letting you know. Why? I don't because I'm at the supermarket and I forgot to charge my phone. I don't know. Something's killing my battery. I know. I know. I'll I'll try to run as fast as I can to the house. Okay. Uh, charge my phone. Let me split the screen. Okay. Oops. There we go. Okay. There we go. How's that? Can everybody see it? Yeah. Got a couple of you shaking your head. If you guys, if it doesn't move, you're going to need to tell me. Okay. All right. The lesson on, and this is lesson focuses on an understanding of how to perform basic draping and shampooing scalp massage techniques and how those techniques will serve as the foundation for your client's first contact with the professional's skill level. So basically, What's happening here, okay? The very first time your client sits in your chair and gets a shampoo from you, they're gonna decide whether or not you're any good, okay? That shampoo sets the tone for the rest of the style or haircut or wet set or whatever you're going to be doing to this client. So you wanna give them a very good shampoo and massage. It's also gonna give you a good tip if you actually do it correctly. If you rush through it, they're not going to wanna tip you, trust me, okay? So I'm gonna turn this page over. Why do you think some people say that the shampoo and the scalp massage is their favorite part of the service experience? Because it relaxes them, right? What would you say it was? Do you not feel like more relaxed and calm after they've given you a shampoo? Yeah. So this is the experience that they actually remember. And a lot of times they look forward to it. What's kind of strange is when you actually get to work on a client here, okay? Sometimes you guys aren't offering that shampoo, but that shampoo is included in the price of the haircut, okay? For a reason, so that they get that nice feeling from you so you can get your little tip, okay? So don't skip on that. Some people will come in and say, um, I just washed it, just get it wet. You know what I used to tell clients all the time if they didn't want me to let, if they didn't want me to wash their hair, I'd be like, do you have this really good conditioner that I do? I go, I don't think you do, but I'm going to give it to you and I'm not going to tell my boss this. Usually nine times out of 10, they'll tell you, okay, go ahead. So it gives me an opportunity to actually make sure it's really clean before I cut it. Okay. Or I've gotten all the conditioner out because a lot of times they don't get that out. So then when I go to style it afterwards, it's either flat or it doesn't behave the way it should behave because they've either left too much conditioner or they haven't really shampooed their hair. Okay. So I want to really do the shampooing. So I know that it's done correctly and it'll be residue in the hair. Okay, what will it achieve? Okay, list the considerations for draping during a shampoo and scalp massage service, explain the purpose of the shampooing and conditioning, and compare the five types of massage movements, okay, that are used during a scalp massage. Who actually have not done an actual shampoo yet? Is there anybody in this class? I'm gonna switch this page just so I can check. An actual shampoo on clients uh -huh. or on themselves? Yeah, no, on a client. No, never done it. I got how many newbies I've got in here. Okay. So most of you have actually gotten to do a client before, right? And given them a shampoo. No? Raise your hand if you, you've done a client here at the school. Okay. All right. Still not enough many. Okay. All right. That's okay. You'll get your chance. Trust me. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Let me go back to the screen here. There you go. Okay. I bet you like the shampoo when you got it done, right? When you got your hair done? 
Yeah. Okay. This is just going through the things that we have to learn. Okay. So the first part of this is draping and shampooing and scalp massage. Okay. Making them feel comfortable. Okay. Draping. This is performed prior to the hair care service to protect the client's skin and clothing. This is a test question, you guys. Okay, why do we wear a Sanix first? Is to protect their clothing with that drape. Okay, because you can't lay that drape against somebody's skin. So draping is performed prior to the hair care service, such as shampooing and scalp. A single drape is one towel or a Sanix and a drape. One towel and a drape or a Sanix and a drape. So it tells you first to place that towel around the client's neck, All right? It's used to catch that wet hair. You really don't wanna leave that towel on their neck. It says wet hair cutting, but you don't want that wet towel with hair on there irritating their neck. So there's two types of drapes. There's a plastic one, which is the waterproof one. Okay, it protects the client's clothing again. It's used for shampooing, wet cutting, styling and chemical services. It allows wet hair to slide more easily to the floor than a cloth cape. Talks about our neck strip, which replaces the towel after the shampoo service, but prior to your hair cutting so that the drape is not touching their skin. Okay. Again, it allows the hair to fall naturally. It's less bulkier than the towels and prevents loose hairs from embedding into the client's clothing. The cloth cape, okay, this is used during services on dry hair. Okay, it's lighter weight, a little bit more comfortable, but it allows dry hair to slide to the floor easily. I'm trying to get through all these. Is the slides moving, you guys? I don't hear anybody saying no. Yeah, they're moving. Okay, good. All right, so shampooing actually removes dirt and oils and product buildup. Okay, let me let this person in here. Okay. Conditioning is to fortify the damage areas and protect it against further damage from chemical services. So we use a shampoo that's designed for the client's hair type and condition. Not cleansing hair properly can lead to scalp disorders. Okay, because it's leaving too much dirt up there. Conditioners will provide a temporary remedy for existing hair problems so that you can like detangle it. Refer the client with infectious diseases or disorders to a physician. Do not proceed with the service. So you're going to drape that client and check that scalp before you do anything else, okay? Starting in the back of the nape, that's the first place you're gonna look, and then behind the ears, okay? All right, then we're going to shampoo them, okay? So your shampoo service is performed prior to most hair services, except certain hair colors and chemical services. So for perming, you would actually shampoo them, but for relaxing, you would not shampoo them. Okay. You always wanna read the manufacturer's instructions to be certain, okay? Understanding your pH levels of your shampoos and conditioners will help you select the right product for each hair type and condition. So do you guys know what your pH of your hair is? Okay, it's 4.5 to 5.5. Okay. Hi, Connie. <laughs> All right. So we want to keep and find a shampoo that's in the 4.5 to 5.5 range so that we're not disrupting. Okay. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Everyone's, hold on a second. What's There's happening? people in the waiting room. Oh. Okay, well, go ahead. They're going to make Connie a um, automatic. Sorry, guys. It's okay. I just hit in the last person. Make her so that she can do it. Let everybody in. Huh? Let me yeah. Wasn't I supposed to? No. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. So now they can come in by themselves. They can come in by themselves now, right? No. Huh? Okay. Okay. She's going to check to make sure you guys can get in without me having to go back and forth. Okay. All right. Okay, let me know if it's not moving. Okay. I can't even find that. There it is. Is your slide still moving, you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So when we get to our water service, okay, we have soft water and hard water. Most of your salons are soft water, okay? 
Um, it's generally preferred for shampooing because it doesn't have the minerals in there that can actually mess with your hair colors and your perms. Hard water contains minerals. It doesn't allow the shampoos to lather very much. So you have to use quite a bit more shampoo or any type of surfactant to get it to lather when it is in hard water. When you're at home and you're actually shampooing your hair and you stay at somebody else's house, your hair behaves differently when you're at someone else's house, right? It doesn't act the same. It's either too soft or it's too tangly when you're staying at someone else's house. It's either because the water is too hard or it's too soft. It has to have a, a certain medium to behave a certain way. So always remember to monitor your water temperature before you apply it to your client's scalp. You can test it on the inside of your wrist while you're back at the sink. You need to wipe up any spills to prevent any accidents. Okay, are you still on here? Okay, sorry guys. All right, brushing and combing. Brushing removes the tangles. It increases circulation and it removes the buildup from products. Okay. Brushing prior to chemical services or if any cuts or abrasions are evident, it's not recommended because okay. it'll irritate or scratch the scalp. Okay. Removing the tangles from wet hair. She, is he using a comb or is he using a brush? Hmm? Looks like he's using a comb, right? So you wanna start at the lowest point of the tangled area, release a section of hair and begin at the ends and work your way towards the scalp. So you're gonna start on the very ends and keep going back up this way, all right? Comb each section until the tangles are removed, then part off another section after the first section. You're gonna remove the tangles and blend those sections together so that you can comb throughout the crown, the sides and the top without any tangles. Not starting at the scalp and just ripping when you're coming down. All right, your scalp massage. This is the scientific method of manipulating the body. So your scalp massage is your movements performed to relax the muscles and increase blood circulation to the scalp. Okay. So this massage is a scientific method of manipulating the body by rubbing, pinching, tapping, kneading, or stroking with your hands, fingers, or an instrument. All right, your scalp massage are the movements performed to relax the muscles and increase blood circulation. Both of those are test questions, okay? Scalp treatments combine massage with the use of products. Avoid scalp mas massage prior to a chemical service and be guided by the condition of the client's hair and scalp. Okay. So am I going to brush someone's hair prior to a perm? Right, no, we're not. Okay. All right. When you're massaging the scalp, you want to use a soothing rhythm, maintain contact, meaning keep your one hand on that scalp. You're going to use firm movements and keep your fingernails at a moderate length because they don't want to use their fingernails to scratch their head when you're shampooing them. It's supposed to be the fingertips massaging it. All right, so when you start to massage, you're going to establish a soothing rhythm, okay? Make, again, making contact with the client throughout the massage. Perform the massage with firm controlled movements. If you're tickling, you're not giving it enough pressure. Keep your fingernails at a moderate length to avoid scratching the scalp. It's still working, I can't believe it. Okay, we have motor points and trigger points, okay? And a motor point is where a motor nerve enters a muscle and a trigger point is the tight area within the muscle that causes pain to radiate. So, a motor point stimulates electrical stimulus or it needs, excuse me, electrical stimulus. The muscle will contract at a motor point via the use of an electrode. High frequency rakes are usually directed to treat scalp, dry scalps, and a rod shaped electrode is used indirectly for scalp massage. So actually you're gonna stimulate blood circulation and maybe get that hair growing if the pillow is still alive. A trigger point is the tight area within a muscle that causes pain to radiate to other parts of the body. So it needs pressure to be, to be applied. That trigger point releases constricted areas and alleviates pain. We're not doctors. 
Are you okay, Elizabeth? <laughs> All right. So here's an actual illustration of the motor points and trigger points that you're going to find. Okay. Your motor points of the face and scalp are going to be the occipitalis. Do you know where that's at? Anyone? Back of the head, yes. Okay. It's above the nape. Okay. The posterior auricular nerve. Ear, mm -hmm. behind the ear. Okay. The cervical nerve in the back. <laughs> Okay, the bronchial flexes or the herbs point. I can't even see where that one's at. Where is that one at? Oh. oh, right here on the neck. That's kind of strange, huh? Didn't know that. All right, the trapezius, the back, it's probably in the back there. The um, frontalis, the forehead, okay. The corrugator, it's like right here, okay, like right where your eye, right below your eyebrow there. The orbicularis oculi, where's that one? Oculi is eye, right? Nasalis is your nasal area. The quadrius labi superioris, upper lip, okay. Orbicularis oris, your mouth. Okay, triangularis, again, it's in the back. And your quadrius labi inferioris, where's that? Lower lip. <laughs> okay. All right, the trigger points of the face and scalp are going to be the temporalis, facial nerve, the facial nerve, buccal branch, or the mandibular branch. Okay. So mandibular is here, right? And your buccal is somewhere in this area here. Your facial nerve, the temporis, is right here. So when we're actually giving a face massage, we're actually relieving tension right through here in the temples. Okay, moving on. Okay, your five basic movements of massage are going to be effleurage, petrissage, tapotement, friction, and vibration. Okay, and you'll have to show four at board. So movement one is effleurage. It's a relaxing and soothing, light gliding strokes or circular motions. It's often used at the beginning or the end of a massage. And that's a test question right there, which manipulation is used at the beginning and the end of the massage. Okay, it's also used on the face, neck and arms. Movement two is petrissage, which is a deep stimulation of the muscles, nerves, and skin glands. It's to promote circulation of the blood and lymph. It's also known as a light or heavy kneading or rolling of the muscle. It's generally performed from the front of the head to the back, and it's also used on the face, arms, shoulders, and upper back. Okay. Movement number three, tapotment. Stimulates nerves, promotes muscle contraction, and increases blood circulation. It's so a light tapping or slapping movement. It's also used on the arms, the back, and the shoulders. Movement four is friction. It stimulates the nerves, increases your blood circulation. It is a circular movement with no gliding, okay? It's applied with the fingertips. So it's the one that you just don't lift up. You're just doing it like this over and over, okay? And then you have movement five, which is known as vibration, which is highly stimulating but it's a shaking movement. So it's kind of like wherever you're gonna use it, it's gonna be a light shaking next to that area of the body. So it says the arms shake as the fingertips and palms touch the client. So you have all five, four of them you will have to show at board or show some use of that. Effleurage, patrissage, tapotment, and friction. Okay, you won't have to do vibration at board. Okay. Scalp massage, this is a handheld electrical massager. It's going to produce soothing or stimulating massage, depending on its, how strong it is. The contraindications are going to be heart weaknesses or problems, a fever, an abscess, or skin inflammation. Well, we're not working on anything, anyone that has that anyways. Okay, it's going to produce soothing or stimulating massage, right? These are the rest of the contraindications. 
heart weakness, fever, abscess, inflammation. If you're not sure what they are, okay, heart problems, somebody has a fever, you should be working anyways. An abscess is an, an inflammation too, but you don't want to have any open areas of the skin. So the guidelines on these are to leave your thumb and your finger free, adjust the device, and then turn on the current. Regulate its intensity and duration and pressure just by asking the client, how's, how's my pressure on here? You can offer a series of treatments to be effective. You wanna avoid vibrations over the upper lip. You're gonna use slow and light vibrations for soothing and relaxing effects and use the light vibrations of a moderate speed and time for a stimulating effect. Okay. And you can use moderately timed fast vibrations with firm pressure to reduce fatty tissues. I can just wait for all these questions. <laughs> all right, shampooing and scalp considerations for children, the elderly or disabled client and clients in wheelchairs, okay? Examples might be this, the child may need a booster chair, the elderly or disabled client may need to lean forward into the shampoo bowl. So that means they're not sitting, they're just standing and their heads tilted forward because they're kind of like, their posture isn't that great anyway, so they're kind of being leaned over. It's a lot easier for them to stand with their head over the sink. Okay, and then there's clients with wheelchairs. They may need to stay in their wheelchair, so you'll have to move the chair out of the way, the shampoo chair out of the way, and bring their wheelchair right up to that little dip in the sink. Okay, here's check what you know. All right, draping is performed prior to hair care services such as shampooing and scalp massage. True or false? True, okay. It is not necessary to disinfect the shampoo capes. False. <laughs> okay. Three, the purpose of shampoo is to cleanse the scalp and hair by removing dirt, oils, and product. What do you think the next word's gonna be? Build up? Product buildup. Okay. Four, knowing that your water is soft or hard will enable you to choose the proper shampoo. Okay. All right. Number five, when removing tangles from the hair, always start from, you get to answer this at the ends. Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Six, scalp massage involves movements performed on the scalp to relax the muscles and increase blood circulation. Good, okay. The three primary scalp movements are effleurage, patrissage, and the T word. <laughs> Department, you're right, it's the T word. <laughs> okay, light gliding strokes or circular movements, motions are a massage movement that known as, what was the first one I taught you? Effleurage, okay. So that's the light gliding strokes, okay. Number nine, the massage movement performed by kneading muscles between the thumb and the fingers is known as, you wanna try? Petrissage, yes, that was good. <laughs> okay, and then 10, using a shampoo bowl that allows you to stand behind the client helps to reduce back pain. You want to try that one? Back pain? Somebody got something different? Okay. Let's see if we were right or wrong. <laughs> All right. Draping is performed prior to the hair care service. So that's true. Second one was false. It's necessary to disinfect shampoo capes. Okay. All right. The purpose of shampoo is to cleanse the scalp and hair by removing that product buildup. For knowing the water is soft or hard, will enable you to choose the proper shampoo. And then when removing tangles from the hair, always start from the lowest point, which is the ends, okay? <laughs> so we had to put lowest point instead of ends in there. All right. Six, scalp massage involves movements performed on the scalp to relax the muscles and increase blood circulation. Got that one right. Three primary scalp movements are effleurage, petrissage, and tip movement. Um, eight, light gliding strokes or circular motions are effleurage. And the massage movement performed by kneading the muscles between the thumb and fingers 
patrissage. Oh, and 10, using a shampoo, using the shampoo bowl that allows you to stand behind the client helps to reduce back fatigue. Okay. All right. So let's see, we're going into our draping now. Okay, shampoos and conditioners. All right, let's get to the rest of this. Because I'm taking too long, they said. <laughs> All right. This is just points that we just went through. Okay, so I can go to the next one. Go on. Okay, we went through this one too. All right, I'm still moving. Stuck. Did it finish? Is that the end of that chapter? We did cover that, didn't we? We did. Is that the end of that chapter for you guys? Totally. Yeah. Sweet. Connie, are you still on there? She's still here. I don't see her. I don't see her, huh? Did I lose half my class or what? <laughs> Everyone's still here. I'm still here. Okay. I'm right. here. Okay. I'm coming. Okay, so we go up to chapter eight, I guess. I can move on to that. Right. And I did see right. a message up there in the chat. You have the chapter eight notes. Okay. Yeah, we're just talking about that. All right. You want to finish chapter seven? Hold on. Let me just set it up on there for me. Okay. And you have a chapter eight. Um, let me finish it. We did that. We did. Uh, I think so. All right. Perfect. We're going to chapter eight. You do a roll right now, Miss Carly? The guy who's been the ace for the ace, and even though he is not been quite as sharp as we're used to seeing, Chris Bassett still has not a lot of run. Huh? I uh, yeah. Oh, you got me a Lugo on it? Lugo wasn't there when you pick roll the first time. Hey, he was. No, and I said, Julian, Julian, and you guys weren't even paying any attention, so yeah. <laughs> Man, come on, don't play hard to get now. I was like one of the first five to log in. You gotta give me some credit. First time. That's not good. I had to get accepted in this mug. Yeah, I'm sick and strip. No, that's all you. Sure. I got pizza coming. Take a okay. Chapter eight. Plus, oh, he got the A's bullpen lined up, the best bullpen in baseball this year. Um, I don't know if these slides are going to move. That's the, that's the common one. Thing. That's the ones I'm on. Let's go, Oakland. Okay. So I don't know if they're going to move.
Is it not working? No, I just looked from over there and my phone won't hook up to the, <laughs> to the internet because it was from over just there. Just put an SD on the SD site on here. As soon as you walk past her, it, it messes it back up. up. Look, why is my phone vibrating? It's telling me I'm out of range. Because I have to do my phone. Um, okay, well, this should work. Hopefully, this will work. Are you on the SD or the Cosmo? I'm on the Cosmo. Can you see this? these slides, everyone? Anyone? Can you see these slides? Yeah. Okay, does it move? Is it moving? No, it's stuck on lab tracking. We know. Educator <laughs> support. It doesn't say seen and thinking as a designer. No. Okay. Great. We don't use that one. <laughs> okay. And it's the Cosmo. Yep. It's the Cosmo, and that's why it wasn't working. Okay. Let's go back. Um, okay. One. Okay. Okay, so Barbers, you're not going to be on 104B.1 and Cosmos, you're going to be in Chapter 8. Might be a little bit different. They're definitely worded a little bit differently for sure now. So um, we have to kind of switch a little bit what, for the Cosmos. A little bit different. Okay, let me go get her a book. Okay. You guys all still there? Come well, on, I'm taking roll. You better all be here. I'm right. still here, Ms. Jenny. Yeah, there we go. I thought I'd hear from somebody. <laughs> all right. Connie, why don't you get the barber book for me? So, Cosmos, you are on page 211 in your study guide, okay? Chapter 8. It's 8.1. In the textbook, it's 217, okay? But 211 in the study guide. And when the barbers come back, she'll have that one up for me. So it should be in 104 point, let's see, 104B1. That's where yours is at. Is that right? The design connection? Again, let me know if you're not getting, if the slides aren't moving. Yeah, it is in that one. 104B1, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Page is off. We have like about five more minutes. So <laughs> I don't care what you want me to do with it. Same thing as a designer. Okay, right. Same, same thing I as a designer. Same thing. I'm not worried about the cosmic designer. There you go. That was the same thing. Okay. We got five minutes. Okay, just an FYI. <laughs> Until she has to come back. Sorry about that. So this lesson is gonna <laughs> have us thinking like a designer. Okay. Covers design elements, design principles, create as a designer, and adapt as a designer. We should have a couple little exercises here. It's how we see things. So which creative expressions might 
have something in common with nature. Are the slides moving? Yes. Okay. And then it's, okay. Hold on. Inspire is the architect, paintings, sculptures, and hairstyles. All are composed with forms, textures, and colors inspired by the world around you. So, what is that noise? <laughs> okay. Just trying to get it. I just get this. Psh. What will it achieve? It'll provide examples of how to see and think as a designer relative to hairstyles. It'll identify the three design elements that comprise every object and hairstyle in the world. And it identifies the four design principles related to the design elements. Okay. So, there we go. Provide ways to create hairstyles as a, like a designer and provide example ways to adapt hairstyles like a designer. You guys, I hope you have your books in front of you. Do you remember what the three levels of observation are? Anyone? Get no response. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I can hear you now, barely. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's isn't it like isn't it like basic detail and abstract? These three. Yep, that's it. So design is the arrangement of shapes, lines, and other effects to create an artistic whole. That again is a test question right there. Okay. So here we go, we are going to be seeing, creating, thinking, and adapting. All right. Whoa. Okay. We're going to see as a designer means observing the world and objects around you, making the connections among the different things that you see. Thinking as a designer means analyzing what you see, visualizing a new design, or organizing a plan to create that design. Okay. So it's kind of like putting the puzzles together, right? When you're thinking as a designer. So when you're doing, looking at someone's haircut and, and figuring out how you're going to do that haircut is basically what they're talking about. You look at it and you're like, okay, how am I gonna to get to that point and make it look this haircut or this hairstyle look like that haircut? So you select it through the three levels of observation, which were the basic, detailed and abstract. So you're gonna break it down a lot easier for you. The basic would be observing that object and its silhouette. Look at the form, the shape of the jacket. It's got no details on it. And its shape is probably like a rectangle if you had to put it in a little box. In the detail form, you're taking a closer look at it and you're gonna observe the textures or the colors, okay? The type of fabric, buttons, pockets. That's the detail that you don't actually look at very often. Then the abstract is gonna be more conceptual. So it's gonna be less literal. Use the information from basic and detailed to see a step beyond the object's face value. Visualize the pattern and the pieces that make the jacket and the proportions. So it's like literally taking the puzzle apart and putting this part of it over here, this part going on here, the sleeve is attached to the lapel. That's basically what they're talking about. You're breaking it down into a puzzle so you can fit it together. So here's another picture of your basic detailed and abstract. Okay. Can you see the difference in the abstract where it actually puts like little highlights but it's making it red compared to that first basic one? You can see the different shades of gray, but it's a little bit more abstract on the last one, right? And detailed, you went from black and white to color, all right? So this basic form is gonna be a round shape your details and texture is going to be activated because you see the different layers in there. Okay, and the color is dark to light. And then the abstract is showing you the directions that it's going to go. Okay. Design elements. We have form, texture, and color. Okay. Break this down. Form. Okay, is a three-dimensional representation of shape and consists of 
length, width, and depth. Okay, so it's a 3D form of the shape. Okay. These shapes right here, we have a square, a triangle, and a circle, okay? The shape is the two-dimensional representation of form, and it consists of your length and width. Think of like um, a tattoo is more like two-dimensional, okay, because it's flat on the skin. Then you have your geometric forms and shapes, okay? The three categories of form and shapes are going to be Rectilinear form, which is shapes, squares, rectangles. The line is going to be horizontal or vertical. Your triangle form, triangular form is going to be your shapes, triangle, diamond, kite, and trape trapezoid. Your line is going to be diagonal. Curvilinear is circle, half circle, crescent, oval, and oblong. And your line is going to be curved. Okay. And then we have our properties of form. You have a point, a line, and a shape, okay? Your line is gonna to extend to become that line, and then the shape, the line extends to become that shape. Okay. Your line and point is that mark where you set into motion where it becomes a line. So dot, dot, dot to the straight line, okay? And a line is a series of connected points. When you're doing a haircut, when you do your first cut, okay, which is your design line, right? You make that line at least match up to it when you finish the haircut. Okay, you start at one point, you're going to end at that same starting point. And Connie, are you still on there? Because we need you right now. Okay, here are your straight lines, horizontal and vertical and diagonal. Okay, so horizontal are going to be parallel to the horizon, so they're going to go this way. Your verticals are perpendicular to the horizon, which are up and down. And your diagonal are either slanted, horizontal or vertical, depending on which way it's going. Okay. Your horizontal lines are actually gonna give you like making the hair look thicker and your vertical are going to make it look like it's layered and closer to the head. All right, your curved lines, you have concave, which is curved inward like the inside of <laughs> a cave. All right, your convex is curved outward and your waves are alternating concave and convex lines. Okay. Okay. Here's some more examples of your lines. They can be hard and defined, or they can be soft and less defined. So your hard lines are going to include lineups, perimeter lines, a shaved part, and your soft lines are going to include the blended or bur blurred lines of a fade. Okay. You see the difference in all three of these? Yeah. All right, now we're going to take a look at the shape. So that shape again is that two dimensional representation of form and it consists of your length, width, but not depth. So it's generally seen as a flat space or plane. It's enclosed by a line that has turned to meet itself. And when it's extended into space, the shape becomes the form. The type of shape determined by your angles and or lack thereof. So you can see the red line that goes around each one of those haircuts. Okay. Thank you. Do not, log out. Do not log out, okay? Otherwise you're not going to get credit for today, okay? All right. Um, what time is this, two right now, right? Yeah, it's 1.56, yeah. Okay, do you want to take roll before we? No, we don't let anybody else in. Oh, <laughs> I did let two people in. I don't know, you'll find out when you do roll. <laughs> it might be early, I don't know. <laughs> I thought was going to put a button by yourself, but it's not. You can't. It's a new safety feature. Oh. <laughs> you have to admit right, so it. I let it to other people just do so. I'm not going to be early. I don't know. I just went through. 
stamp this on so I can put it right here. This is where I left off. Design elements right here. Weighty, curve, convex. Okay. So I'm going to be on. So, yeah. We're good. This is where I'm at. Um, go ahead and take a break, about 10 minutes. Those of you that were on here at one o'clock, um, just don't log out. That way you, I don't have to let you back in, but you can like turn your camera off and stuff if you want. And then we'll see you in um, about 10 minutes.